My name is Suzanne, I'm a registered nurse and I've been a nurse for 25 years. I'm currently working in communities around the HIV crisis in Saskatchewan. We usually try to be on the road by 8.30, so we're in community around 10 o'clock. Some of the communities are getting a little more comfortable, I think, talking about HIV and even hepatitis C, right? And um, one of the communities has approached me about doing um, a targeted HIV testing day. HIV is at crisis levels in Saskatchewan. A number of new cases are still rising and there are some areas in particular that we're really seeing HIV at epidemic levels. We are at a state where um, we've seen the sustained increase for 10 years. We have seen a change in who's affected by HIV. We've seen a movement out from the larger urban centers into smaller urban and then rural settings where there's maybe less access to care communities where they have no idea that HIV even exists in their communities. If you have any questions, just stop me. Okay. Okay? Have you been tested for HIV before that you no. know of? Okay. So the reason we're offering it is we're trying to offer it to all adults. Um, it's recommended now for all adults who are sexually active or who, who have been sexually active and who may not know their status. Okay? okay? We ha now have something called an HIV point of care test. So this is a very simple test. Um, it takes very little time to actually perform the test and it can be done in a variety of settings. So, and the hardest part is getting the blood. So, I'm gonna just gonna poke your finger here first. Sure. It's not a diagnosis that belongs to a certain person who looks a certain way or who has a certain life. HIV is about risks and risk behaviors. And most people have had some risk. Most people have had sex. That's a risk for HIV. I'm Gloria, and I'm a peer mentor working with HIV and Hep C in Saskatchewan. I was diagnosed in um, 2003 with HIV, uh, which was a total surprise for me. You have people like me that never took too many risks in her life. I was never an injection drug addict. I was never an alcoholic, so I was always in control of what I do, and I still got HIV. So many people, when they find out about me, they look at me and they say, but you don't fit the picture. And I'm like, well, that's exactly that. And the guy that gave it to me didn't fit the picture either. As a peer mentor, we have to deal with this care. People are frightened once they get diagnosed, they still think that it's a death sentence. The main question that I get asked is, how long will it take before I die? And my answer to that is always, well, you're gonna die of old age probably. What you have to do is take your medication exactly how, prescri how the doctor prescribed it. If you take your meds the way you should be taking them, you become like a normal person. You know, your disease is not gonna affect you. Nowadays with HIV, you can live a normal life and a normal lifespan with regular blood work and tolerable medications. Okay, so Alicia, this is your test result. Mm -hmm. So we know 100% the test worked well, and we know because there's only that single blue dot at the top that this is a non-reactive test, Wonderful. okay? Based on what we chatted about earlier, you haven't had any risks in the last three months. No. Okay, so this is very good information, and it means that I can say you're HIV negative today. We need to remember that up to 20 to 25% of people who have HIV in this province are undiagnosed. So those folks are walking around making no change to their life, not putting any effort into reducing transmission because they don't frankly know that they have HIV. My name is Debbie and I'm a registered nurse. I work in the Regina urban area with persons living at risk and persons living with HIV. It really is talking to folks and ensuring that they've been tested recently and then the most important step, trying to link them to care. I would say up until around the late 90s that we saw largely gay identified white men as being primarily affected by HIV. In the early 2000s, we saw a shift to other vulnerable people. 
people who live in chronic poverty, people who have poor access or equitable access to care are gonna be the people most affected by a variety of chronic diseases. I can see that you were tested five years ago. So it's time for another test. HIV, we consider today a chronic illness. That means that you need to stay connected with your care provider and it involves usually taking medication. We can't cure HIV, but we can control the virus and we can keep you healthy. There are what we would call barriers to care or barriers to accessing care. Those would be linked to the social determinants of health. And for many, it would be the fact that they daily strive to make sure that they have food on the table, have a roof over their head, transportation. And when you're missing some of those key elements, it's really difficult to access care. We have medications that can prevent people from moving from HIV into AIDS, but oftentimes because of the social determinants of health or their access to care issues, they're not able to actually engage to get diagnosed to be on treatment. It's mostly about education and communication and developing trust and developing relationships that will encourage folks to access care, get tested, and then stay in care. Those folks that are living with HIV have not had access to a test and their diagnosis is unknown. They potentially contribute to the rising rates. So, you know, that testing piece is really important. My name is Greg Real. I am a registered nurse. I am the chair of the Canadian AIDS Society. I'm also the chair of All Nations Hope Network. Everyone uh, potentially can be at risk for HIV. So we need people to get tested. People don't get tested because they don't have access to the testing or because they're afraid to get tested. Some people might be afraid to get tested because of the stigma and or discrimination. I think that stigma still plays a huge role in, in our HIV crisis in Saskatchewan. People are afraid to get tested because they're afraid of people finding out that they have HIV. I think that there are still some unfortunate cases where within the healthcare system people are still stigmatized by healthcare providers' lack of awareness around HIV. It's really hush-hush, we don't want to talk about it. HIV is a symptom of many, many other things in our province, many other things in our social system and with humanity. And so if we're not tackling those things, this is not gonna change for us. When someone has HIV and they take HIV medications or antiretroviral medications, usually within the first three to six months, if their HIV viral load is suppressed, then you cannot pass the virus. Once we get people treated, then we can get this epidemic under control. My name is Denira, and I am living with HIV, and I consider myself an HIV advocate and an activist. I see a lot of stigma and discrimination in my community, which I'm trying to help to reduce by showing my face um, being not afraid to tell people my story. The stigma and the, the discrimination is there and we can feel it and we can feel it everywhere that we go. I know a lot of people who do not want to get tested. For them, it's, it's the, if they find out they're positive, they tell me that they're gonna kill themselves. There's new research out there that we need to share with people, telling them that they can live long. And HIV is um, not the same as it was before. The only way that, you know, that HIV will destroy you or take your life is if you don't continue with your meds. A person needs support in order to help themselves. And if they don't have that support, well, they don't care about their diagnosis. They don't care about themselves and they won't get tested or else if they do get tested, they won't stay on the meds. I know I have a, a long life ahead of me still and that's because I didn't give up. Hey, Suzanne, how are you? As HIV increases in our province, funding and our commitment from some of our funders, provincially and federally, um, some of those are drying up and it's frustrating. That, that's gonna be key because uh, I think there's gonna have to be some political will for that. Political will to, to open up more testing sites. 
The funding was allocated in the bigger urban centres where we saw more disease, but we're not seeing a movement of those funds into those smaller urban centres, into more rural settings. There hasn't been any increase in funding. The money we have now is the same money we had eight years ago. I think certainly more funding for HIV testing and addictions and chronic pain services is necessary. It's about having a balanced team of different registered nurses working in different areas. We're all in this together, and at the end of the day, we're going to pay whether we pay now up front from a prevention standpoint um, or whether we pay later. And personally, I would prefer to intervene early to have these conversations. That's right. And actually, um, I got a call um, from one of the nurses. We need to normalize the test. We need to reach out to folks that aren't getting tested and figure out ways that we can provide access to a care broadly you know, across the whole province. Everyone should be tested for HIV at minimum every five years. And that it's our job as providers to talk about that and to offer that. Whether you're a registered nurse or a physician, we can all have those conversations with our, our patient population. HIV is a very, very controllable disease. The solution to the problem is to get tested and to know very early. It's that simple. If you take all your meds the way you're supposed to, uh, you're going to have a long life. I will be 75 years old pretty soon. I've been living with HIV since 2003. It's not HIV that's going to kill me for sure.